Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the second Photoshop tutorial for Lovely Living. Uh, today I am going to show you another photo collage tutorial for an 8x8 collage, um, but this time it's also going to have some journaling in it as well. Um, this is great for project life, scrapbooking, um, or any sort of memory keeping, or you can even uh, print these up and send them to grandparents or aunts and uncles uh, with photos of the kids or the family in it. Um, it's a really, really nice little keepsake. Uh, if you watched the last tutorial, you'll know how to create clipping masks. So we're going to go through and do all of that again. Uh, for those that haven't watched it, I will show you step by step how to do it. So the easiest way uh, to start is to gather up all of your images and put them in the one folder, just so you know where they are. I've created a folder on my desktop called Photoshop Tutorial. Um, so I'm just going to open up that folder and Basically, we need five images. So we need five images to fill those five spaces. And I wanna open those up in separate tabs inside Photoshop. So I'm going to select my five images. Five. And to select, them, to select multiple images, you need to uh, click on the image, hold down the command button, and then select the other images while still holding the command button and that or the control button on a PC. And that will select multiple images. Now to open those up in Photoshop, what you need to do is you need to right click and you need to select open with. Open with Adobe Photoshop CS5 and click. And that will open each of your images in a separate tab. Now we wanna go back to our photo collage and what we want to do is we want to start by inserting the photos. So we want to put the very first photo in this very top left box. And I've named this box top left. So you want to, over on the side, just click top left. You want to go and find the photo that you want to put in there. So we'll do this one of little Max. And we want to click our mouse button, hold down on the photo, and we want to drag it up into the corner to the tab of our photo collage and drop it down on top of that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a clipping mask. And what a clipping mask does is it will actually contain that photo inside that frame. If we expand our photo out now, you'll see that it goes right over the top of that frame. But what we want to do is we want to contain it in behind that frame so it sits nicely. And what we need to do is we need to go over here and click on layer one. What we're going to do is we're going to rename that layer first. I like to name all of my layers just so that I know what they are so that if I need to change them, um, I can find them really quickly. So you double click on layer one. I need to select my move tool. Always remember to select your move tool over here. And you want to double click on layer one and we're going to rename that max. And press enter to commit that change. And then what we're going to do is to create the clipping mask, we're going to right click on that image layer and press create clipping mask. Now you can't actually see any change in that image right now. You can see that the clipping mask has been created. Over here you can see a little arrow pointing down to that next layer. And basically what we need to do is we need to expand that image out. And we're going to do that by holding down our shift key. That's going to make sure that we expand our image out evenly and proportionally. So holding down the shift key and clicking on the corner of that photo, and we're going to drag that out. And now you can see when we drag that out, that image is sitting behind that frame. And what you want to do is you always want to make sure that your image is just sitting a little bit further on the outer sides just to make sure that you get that image completely in there. And to commit that change, once you've dragged it out, you just want to hit the enter key. And then you can use your mouse or your left and right up and down buttons just to move that image inside that frame. And there we have our very first image inside that frame. And we want to do the same with all of the other spaces. 
So we're going to move over and we're going to click on the middle left button and the middle left layer and that is going to select this box just here. And we're going to grab another image and we will probably do this image. And again, we're going to click our mouse down and hold it and we're going to drag the image up to the corner to that tab there. And we're going to drop it down on top. And we're going to move back over and we're going to rename our image and we're going to call that one Daddy and Cooper and press enter. And then we're going to create our clipping mask and you're going to right click create clipping mask. And then we're going to expand the image by holding down our shift key, clicking down on the corner of that image and dragging the image out. And we're going to drag it right out just until you get it to where you want to. Um, I want to zoom in a little bit on this image, so I'm just going to pull it right out. And to commit that change, all we need to do is hit enter and that will commit the change. And then we can still move the image around inside that box. And we're going to do a, another one again for the bottom just there. And this one is called um, bottom left box. So we're going to go and find another image and we're going to click on the image and hold it down and drag it all the way up to that tab and drop it back down. And we need to rename that image again. So we're going to double click on uh, the layer one there and we're going to call it Cooper and press enter to commit that change. Again, we need to create a clipping mask, so we're going to right click, create clipping mask, and that's going to sit it nicely in there. And we're going to expand that photo out. Now I'm going to show you what will happen. If we don't hold down our shift key when we expand out, we can move it and distort it in all different ways. And we really don't want to do that. We want to keep the same proportions of the image. So we're going to control Z to go back to the original image and holding down our shift key, you'll notice that no matter how much I try and pull it up, it will still only pull out and hold its shape. And the same as when I go down. So we want to keep the shape of our image really proportional. So we want to drag out and I want to zoom in a little bit on this image and hitting enter to commit that change. Now something interesting that you can do if you want to, if you don't want to put an image in a space, let's just say um, this center image just here, if we want to um, make that say a different color and just have a color block there, it is really, really simple to do that. And what we need to do is we need to go over and select our paint bucket over here, our little paint bucket tool. You come down here and you select the foreground color this is your color picker and basically you can select any single color inside here and you can go through the little color chart and find the perfect color or we could even select something from inside the color from inside the photo so just say we wanted to make it yellow like the horse we can go through and we can use our little color eyedropper to select a shade of yellow from that horse and press OK and you'll notice that that color is now sitting in the little box and that's our foreground color. Now, the one behind it is our background color and you can easily switch those two by clicking the switch foreground and background button. If you switch it, it will just switch those two. But we wanna switch back to the yellow and making sure we have our paintbrush tool selected and making sure we have the right um, layer selected. So we want this little middle box, which I need to rename, which will be bottom center. And we want to make sure that that's selected. And all we do is we hold our little paint bucket over and click, and that will fill that space in with a color. So if you could do that for any one of these boxes, if you don't want to have an image, you can put a color in there as well. So we will move back up and we will select our move tool again. And we're going to put one more image in the end here. 
So we want to select that last box and I'm going to rename that one again, which is going to be bottom right. And what we're going to do is we're going to find another image. And let's find one. We'll use this one and we're going to again click and hold and drag it across and drop it down. We're going to rename our image and it's going to be called Max 2. And again, we're just going to hold down our shift key, hold down the corner of our image and drag it out. Reposition it and drag it. And what I forgot to do was create the clipping mask. So we're going to, you can do that after if you find that you've forgotten to create the clipping mask. All you need to do is right click and press create clipping mask. And if you actually watch the image now as I create the clipping mask, you will actually see the image pop behind um, into that little gray box. There we go. And we just reposition the image to where we want it to be and press enter to commit that change. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, change the, uh, the, the date and the title up here. So clicking on the date layer over this side, we're going over here to select our text tool. And this is our text tool or our type tool. And what we're going to do is I'm going to leave the font the same. It's a skier, it's a regular font, and it's at 12 points, which is going to be exactly the same as what's here. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on that title, and I don't want that title to be there anymore, so I want to highlight it and delete it. And what we're going to call this is it's going to be Day at Dreamworld. And then we're going to click over here and click on our move tool and that is going to commit that change for us and enter that title. Now if you do want to change the color of that all you need to do is click, click on the, uh, the type tool over here and you can change the color exactly the same way as we change that color box. So if we do want to select a color here we can um, and you'll see that um, the title is changing um, if we want to make it the same color as the box here or any color inside that photo, all we need to do is just using our little eyedropper, we move it out here and we click on that. So we might make that exactly the same color as our yellow box, which we selected from the horse over here. And you press OK to commit that change. And then we're going to do exactly the same for the date. So you can select on the date and we're going to make sure our type tool is selected and we're going to change the date. So we're just going to highlight that um, the word date there and we're going to change it. And this was um, yesterday, so it was Sunday, the 29th of July, 2012. And if we want to, um, all we need to do um, is to move that out so that we can see the entire date. As you can see, the box is not big enough for that entire date. So all we need to do you just move that box out, just selecting the center one and just move that box out a little bit more. I always like to hold my shift key down just to make sure that I don't distort the box. And there we go. And we just select our move tool and that will commit that change. And that gives us our date. And then we're going to do exactly the same for the text that's inside here. So we're going to select the text here we're going to select our type tool. I'm going to highlight the entire text and I'm going to press delete so that I can write my own text in there. And I'm going to write um, my little piece of journaling. I'll only do a little piece of journaling for you so that you can see what it's like.
This is just a small amount of journaling. Obviously, I can continue the journaling all the way down, but you don't want to sit here and watch me keep typing. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, just move over and select our um, move tool up here. And we can leave it like that, or you can move it around um, wherever you like. So you can move it down to the bottom. And now what I like to do to make sure that all of this lines up, I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to this, you can actually pull a line out that gives you a guide. So coming over to the ruler on this side, you can see the ruler just here on the edge. You just click on that ruler and hold it down and it will allow you to pull out a line. I move it up and I want to line it up with this little dotted line up the top. So I'm just going to put my little ruler there and I'm going to let go. And that's going to give me a nice little line so that I can line up my text there. So I can move that text wherever I like. If I just want to put it right in the middle there, you can just use your left and right key to move it over. And you'll see that once that line goes red there, that means that it's sitting right on top of that ruler line. And if you click it one more, it's sitting over that ruler line. So we're just going to click it back so it's sitting right on the edge. And that's pretty much it. That is our um, photo collage with some journaling in it. You can fill that journaling space up as much as you like, um, but I really didn't want you to sit here watching me type. So um, just to move this little ruler back, all we do is we hold on it. If we hover over it and you'll see this little um, two arrows appear, you click on it and you just drag it back into the side. And there you have it. Um, so we've got a nice little bit of journaling here, a title, um, you've got your date up the top and you've got a photo collage. And you can make any one of those little photo boxes um, into a color if you would like, just by um, following the steps that I showed you. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and if you would like to download this template you can do so from Lovely Living. The link will be in the box below. Thanks!